as we are able for confession and forgiveness. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from your sin to live alone for you. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. I confess to Almighty God before the whole company of heaven and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned by my own fault in thought, word, and deed. I pray God Almighty to have mercy on me, forgive me all my sins, and bring me to everlasting life. Almighty and merciful God, grant you healing, pardon, and forgiveness of all your sins.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, judge eternal, you love justice and hate oppression, and you call us to share your zeal for truth. Give us courage to take our stand with all victims of bloodshed and greed, and following your servants and prophets, look to the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. reading from Jeremiah. Am I a God nearby, says the Lord, and not a God far off? Who can hide in secret places so that I cannot see them, says the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, says the Lord? I have heard what the prophets have said who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long? Will the hearts of the prophets ever turn back? Those who prophesy lies and who prophesy the deceit of their own heart, they plan to make my people forget my name and by their dreams that they tell one another. Just as their ancestors forgot my name for Baal, let the prophet who has a dream tell the dream. But let the one who has my word speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common with wheat, says the Lord? Is not my word like fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces? The word of the Lord. reading from Hebrews. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land, but when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had received the spies in peace. And what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, 
shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put ar foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided, father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say it is going to rain, and so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say there will be scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? The Gospel of the Lord. You would think that the gospel text was ripped from the headlines as we read them currently. There's hardly a day goes by that we don't hear about or read about shootings of average people, of criminals, of police officers. We hear about parents who have killed their children <clears throat> or spouses. One kills the other and then completes suicide. And most of us know of broken family relationships. Maybe in our own family, maybe in the family of one of our children or friends. How many times have we heard the story of 
someone's child radicalized by ISIS and the parents get the word that their child has died and they wonder what happened and they never knew. Or how many houses are quiet because husbands can't speak to wives, couples no longer get along, children lock themselves in their room <coughs> because the relationships aren't what they used to be. Or maybe you just like competition. Well, tune into the Olympics, where Brian Lochte and Michael Phelps, who room together and apparently are great friends, when they hit the pool, all bets are off. Or Simone and Ali as they compete for the best all-around gymnast. Or the sisters, I don't remember what country they're from, competing in the same events in the pool. No one needs to mention Democrat or Republican or current presidential candidates. Who will misstep today and who will jump all over them to make sure that we understand how evil the other person is? and you thought it was better in the church. <clears throat> and churches, and church councils, <clears throat> and the women of the ELCA. Who's in control? When I was pastor of the congregation in Niagara Falls, one similar in size and facilities to St. Matthew's, Ask Helen who was in charge of the kitchen. No one argued with Helen and her kitchen, or you were in more trouble than you knew what to do. Hatred and hurt are often deeply felt and endured for a long time or a lifetime or for generations. And often the pain of division even within the church, is about who's right, who's got the best right, who knows it best of all, and what's the plan for the next 20 years of the church? Well, just ask anyone, and they'll give you their own opinion. We find the warning in the final verses. We know what's right from our own point of view, but to see the other and to envelop her as sister or him as brother is something often beyond our comprehension. Yes, even in the church, we may not be good at weather forecasting, but there are a whole lot of folks who can probably tell you more about the stock market or how the computer works than they can tell you about a specific lesson read on any particular Sunday. And in the midst of all of this, Jesus is in stress. Well, who isn't? Welcome to humanity, Jesus. Because Jesus is Jerusalem bound in our text. To be bound and beaten and nailed to the cross. A baptism that no one should endure but the baptism that Jesus endures for us and for our salvation. A cup he will drink as he will later remind the disciples with a fire that burns with intensity that will destroy its sin itself and gain for us eternal life. You know as well as I do from those Holy Week stories that the only fire Peter will experience is the warmth of the fire burning in the high priest's courtyard in the company of Jesus' enemies as he denies the Christ prophesied by Jesus himself. All this, all this going on in the life of Jesus 
so that we could be saved and we could be heirs of the kingdom. And disciples now of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because it's not something held out for us some far distant point away. But it is for us right now as the baptized people of God. You know what baptisms are like. The little ones come, everyone is joyous, the family celebrates, pictures are taken, parties are given, and it's a wonderful time until someone realizes that what has happened to that little child, as happens to all of us, is that the old in them is drowned so that a new is raised up. Baptism is not only the most profound gift that God gives us, it is also the most dangerous one because it puts us at direct odds with all that is evil in the world and all that opposes the Lord Christ so that we can be refined by the fire of the Spirit and through our baptism empowered to daily living by that Spirit who has touched us with the fire of Pentecost and enables us and empowers us to a new life in Christ Jesus. There is no promise of uniformity among God's people, much less among those with whom we are related. I suspect if you've had a political discussion with a friend a family member, or somebody in the congregation, you can quickly pick up the intensity and the disagreements that can arise. Even within the church, that intensity sometimes arises. I was born and raised in Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, and served for eight years. At the time when Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod was dividing, and the congregation I was serving decided to leave and move to the Lutheran Church in America, one of the founding uh, congregations of ELC, communities of ELCA. Sadly, we had to transfer a very devout and loyal family of that congregation to another Missouri Synod congregation because they said, if you don't do that for us, we will no longer be able to go to church with them. We won't be welcome. Pray with them. They won't pray with us. And most of the dinner invitations will go away. Even within the church. You see, it is a race the writer says to the Hebrew, uh, writer of the Hebrews says today, a race that requires perseverance. Perseverance to walk like Jesus walks. Perseverance to walk as disciples of Christ, baptized in those baptismal waters or others, empowered by the Spirit to live as God calls us to live. But this is a race with a prize, a prize that doesn't hang a gold medal around your neck like at the Olympics, but a prize where the faith and the faithful service we endure and perform brings us to the gift of eternal life with our crucified and risen Lord. Jesus says to us today, it's easy to interpret the signs. So open our eyes, Lord, as the people of God, that we may see the signs of the Spirit before us and serve you as we seek to serve others. We rise for the hymn of the day.
Christ Holy Church, we profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of the heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, our only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of our Son. Amen. Sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, God is the strength of those who believe and the sure hope of those who doubt. Let us draw near in faith, asking the Lord to hear our prayers, our joys, and our concerns. Please kneel as you're able. O God, who is near to us, increase your people's passion to share how Christ transforms lives. Raise up prophets in your church to interpret the word and the world today. Hear us, O God. Renewing God, we pray for scorched places that need rain, those recovering from disaster and those needing balance. Lord, in your mercy. God of power, administer justice. Pour your spirit of compassion and mercy into those who hold the lives of others in their hands. We pray for all who are persecuted or imprisoned for their beliefs. Lord, in your mercy. Compassionate God, save us from being overwhelmed by addictions, medical conditions, competition, and fear. Comfort all in need in body, mind, or spirit. Especially we pray for Clarence and Charlotte and those who we name before you aloud or in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, Give wisdom to our community, Lord. Help us discern your will for our life and ministry together, even when it may divide or challenge us. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious God, we ask that you come and pour your blessings upon your servant Eric as he begins his ministry at St. Matthew's. Bless him and the congregation that they may seek to grow together and to do your will in this place. Continue to support him and his family in their new community, that the community may be a blessing to them and they may be a blessing to the community and others. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you, O God, for the great cloud of witnesses that surround us. Gather us with Maximilian Kolb and Kaj Monk, martyrs of the church, with Carl Salvo and all the saints around your throne, that on the last day we too may celebrate the gift of new life. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept our and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share the peace of the Lord.
Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. When we eat this bread, we share the body of Christ. When we drink this cup, we share the blood of Christ.
Please rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Now may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Go in peace, serve the Lord.